Actually, I was warned. Oh, no, no. I thought I was supposed to be here. Oh, oh. almost knocked oh, the wine bottle doctor. off. She's gotten into the wine, and we have some fresh oh, meat flying around. Shorter. Did you see oh. that? We have fresh meat flying around uh -oh. the studio. How well, flies. It's the middle of winter when we're doing this. Well, let's flies. see what this says. Dear gentlemen, I need some new recipes for steak. S-T-A-K-E. <laughs> I enjoy your show very much when it's on at night. Otherwise, I am unable to get it. Sincerely, Count Ralph Dracula, Transylvania, uh, Pennsylvania. Oh, Transylvania, uh, Pennsylvania <laughs> Station. How uh, about that? And That's wonderful. The steak recipes. Well, we got them today. Well, we have not only that, we have steaks with flies on the side. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's an old joke, but what can I tell you? I don't know. I'm going to be doing a, uh, one of them Philadelphia steak sandwiches. Ooh. Those are so good. And the recipe came directly from Philadelphia, so you know it's got to be authentic. And uh, Russell K. Ingraham of Kingsport, Tennessee, Ingraham, uh, has sent in a chili steak recipe that looks really good, and it's easy as pie. Any fool could do it. No offense. Well, if it's easy as pie, why aren't we just doing pie? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Get out of town. All right. Okay. First thing I got to do to start mine is I have picked uh, these wonderful fresh mushrooms. I have some shrooms with me today, as it's known in business, and I'm going to take those and clean them with this mushroom, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, brush. Uh -huh. And you know how you can tell this is a mushroom brush? Yeah. Because it says, it says so. mushroom brush right there, yes. right on the thing. Is Please what it says. don't mushroom brush. Don't put your mushrooms in the water. Except folks. no imitations. Well, you know, I hate to tell you this, Laban, but I saw a high-priced cook not too long ago said that that was a bunch of hooey. Well, so I don't know. I've used my mushroom brush for years. I love it to death. Well, you know who got me this one? Who? You did. Oh, did I, is that one that I gave? Another you? wonderful gift, ladies and gentlemen, that Laban, an uh, unforgettable gift that oh, he forgot well. about. Who, you know. Here, I thought he'd be thrilled that I used this poor, tired thing, and now he doesn't even that's remember. That's a nicer one than the one I <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> and I'm just going to swish this stuff off of it right. and and you know just get all that little what is it dirt what uh, is that stuff that's it, on it's it? the dirt which is pasteurized before they use it so it's not so it's clean dirt it. yeah it's been totally baked in the oven or whatever they do with it but it's i won't say where it's come because this is a family show sort of that people now we don't need to hear that just get it. on with it's your it. well recipe. i've got to salt and pepper these little cube steaks and i'm going to turn the heat on here people don't need to know control. where milk comes from and they don't need to know where the stuff grows and if you want to do a hard healthy version of this you can these uh, little steaks, these are chuck, and they're, they don't have much fat in them. They're very lean, so they're okay. Chuck was always lean. Yes, and I'm just sprinkling the teeniest little bit of salt on them. And now I'm going to put on some pepper out of this big pepper thing we have. We don't have a pepper grinder. A pepper thing. All right, put, all right, there's, all right now as soon as my heat heats up good enough, I will put these in. Oh, wait a minute. Before I do it, i got to flour them. you got to do what? i got to flour them. Oh. So I've got a tablespoon of flour in this little dish, and I'm just kind of sprinkling them, oozing them around here in the flour. The pepper oh. is in the way, Johnson. Oh, sorry about that. Well, that's the way it goes. That's why we have a floor crew. Is it hot yet? Nope. Is that why we have a floor oh, crew? Oh, yeah. Well, let me flour this one. You, anything you want to do, go ahead. Well, okay. I'm just going to go ahead now. I'm heating up a little butter on top of the stove. It calls for about, uh, oh, I don't know, a little bit. A uh, tablespoon, teaspoon of butter. That looks like two tablespoons. Anyway, and now I've, I'm just going to chop these mushrooms, the fungi. And just chop the fungi up in real nice chops. And while you're heating up your stove, and we're going to do that, and we're going to saute that, and some green peppers, and a couple of garlics. Thanks. You, you know, folks, Larry and I uh, have, on many occasions, cooked for a, a science museum on their annual mushroom foray in the forest during the fall of the year. So we, we are mushroom experts. We know which ones are poisonous. Speak for yourself. And where is that poisonous one we have? I'll never forget when I lost my aunt. Well, never mind. <laughs> Serving her fresh mushrooms. Now, we have done several uh, of those mushroom hunts 
But I must tell you that only my granddaddy used to know the good ones from the bad ones, and I have trusted no one since. To the be good, quite the bad, honest. and the real ugly. Now we're going to take those, and we'll just start. We'll just start sauteing those a little bit. And I've got some other stuff to to go into this sauté mess. They're right persnickety about what goes into this. Next thing I've got to do is take a couple of garlic cloves, and I'm going to smush them real good. That's the fastest way to get a gar garlic clove out of its shuck. Just smash it, and as you can see, the little stuff comes right off of it. And then all you have to do is chop it up, put it in there. It works very, very well. And it says slice it. Doesn't say smush it, it says slice it. That's the best I can do. I'll do another one in case you missed it. Startling overhead, recreation, whoops. That's what you do, and then you see all that just comes right off of there, and you don't have to get your hands into it too much. All right, and we'll chop those and, and add them also to the mix. How many does it call for? Two? I don't know. I'm not watching. Uh, well, I'm not asking ah. you. I'm asking my lovely oh, assistant who's not Doris. doing anything. Well, how many does it call for, Doris? Two? Not paying attention. I think she's watching another show. I think she's watching soap operas on the side. What? I was thinking about my father. He was a chef and he did it with his hands. Don't do garlic with your hands because my father did that and he got blood poisoning from it. Oh, from the garlic no. and it was in the hospital for quite a while. So don't smash the garlic with your hands when blood poisoning. Blood poisoning. Another tale on the program, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Anyway. Chop up some onion. Next. And it says chop it. I would think that it would all you would do would just, you know, slice it, but it says chop it. So that's what I'm going to do. That'll be all I do. Johnson, are you going to do anything well, for this program? Yes, I thought I would. I am having floured, lightly floured. Now, don't have them. You shake them before you put them in so the, the unneeded flour will go off. But uh, you put a little flour, and it'll help the steaks to brown. And we're not going to cook them too long because they're going to cook in the sauce for 10 minutes and these things cook fairly fast and they're they're looking real nice and tender could you uh, describe in great detail how they look they're gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not very much detail and you know you it. could use ground turkey in place of this if you really didn't want the red meat you could use the ground turkey but this red meat is just fine for the job so. okay in goes the chopped onion now in with your mushrooms and your garlic we're putting an entire that's a right big one and it might be just a little bit more than we need but that's okay who's counting next thing we have to do is we have to do chop up a great big old pepper and I'm gonna do that and the easiest way to get to that well that's not the easiest way this is the easiest way. Just take it out like that and dump the seeds out. And there we go. How many does it call for? Half a cup. Half a cup. Wouldn't you say that'd be one whole one? Depends how you cut them. Huh? Depends how well you cut them up. Well, it, it says chop everything, which I find interesting for, for a sandwich. But, you know, these people in Philly know their sandwiches, and we down south have no right whatsoever past judgment on a Philly sandwich. So i got to make it. As a matter of fact, this is so precise it even calls for spring water. Oh, no, you know, Philadelphia is where our friends on the uh, Furniture to Go people. Uh, big fam. Yeah, from Joe and Ed are there. And hello to them. Uh -huh. The onions are starting to get some. I'm just going to go ahead and put a whole one in there, and we'll use what we need to use. So that goes in now also. Now, I've got to get this stuff up and running and sauteing because i got to add some other stuff here in a few minutes. Laban. Well, let me... Uh, now, my little uh, steaks have cooked until they're, they're probably medium rare, but they're okay. And now I have to add to the drippings in here two tablespoons of flour, one, two, and I'm, uh, we need a little salt, and you could use a salt substitute, no trouble, that's about a half a teaspoon of salt, and let me stir this up, now you have to cook your flour in this, that's real important, you don't want to, you actually want it to 
burn just a little bit. It needs to get rid of that ugly taste that you can get in here if you're not careful. I have to add a couple more things to this, and then I'll leave this to you. Spring water. They're very specific about it. It's two ounces, about a half of a quarter of a cup. <laughs> Am I right about that? Mm -hmm. Someone's going to write a letter. Spring water. Very specific amounts. I just can't imagine. But they say it's very important. A little bubbly. This is wine. White. White. Oh. White wine. And I have just completely... Well, can't you... Oh, you don't have... We don't have a wine. Let Doris look and see if she doesn't have a... A wine, what you call it, somewhere. In the meantime, my flour has gotten brown. I've got to add a cup of water to it. Could I use some of your spring water? While we're waiting for the, uh, yeah, here, have some spring water. Why don't All you? Right. You know, I am the only person probably on TV cooking today that actually has a spring house in my backyard. You do. And I do. Came with my 85-year-old uh, house, home, which uh, is a farmhouse. Now, what I have done is I have gotten some, about a half Here's pound of spring water. steak, and I got it, you look at this, I got it already, you can buy it this way in a grocery store, very, very thinly sliced. You can even get it thinner than that if you want to. That's fairly thin sliced, and I'm just going to kind of cut it in little strips is what I'm going to do. While I'm waiting on Doris to bring something to open the bubbly, it sounds bad for the bubbly at this point. We're going to have to dig it out, she says. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have to dig out the thing. No, I don't want to do it over the meat. Well, in the meantime, I, I've added a cup of water to oh. this recipe, and I've got a real nice gravy here. Oh, and yeah, I've got a real nice gravy going here, too. Oh, did it? And it's time to put in the chili. Here we go. We got it. What we did is we pushed the thing down in it, and it squirted up my nose. <laughs> but it's all right. It, it felt right good. Be a little careful when you got that. See, well, I got the thing bubbling around in there, if you can see it. It's bubbling. See it? Bubbling around in there? It's bobbing around in there. I tell you what, uh, we won't be sealing that one up again. <laughs> Here, give this to the janitor. I know how right. much he enjoys that. Thank you very much. We haven't seen him in What happened to my measuring spoon? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. Perhaps it's in your dish. Oh, it's in the bag of flour. All right, now I'm going to add quickly. This thing doesn't a seem to be heating up real fast. And a half of chili powder to this. What's wrong with it? I'm getting irritated. Oh no! Because this thing well, doesn't seem to be heating up very fast. Oh, what's wrong? I don't know, but I better be getting the meat in here and put something on top of it. We'll be eating raw meat. Ooh. Put that in there real quick. Put it in now. It's supposed to go in when it's sautéed. We're going to sauté it all together because I don't want to be eating raw meat. We're halfway through the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting nervous. Well, and you don't want me to get nervous. No. Because he's not a happy camper. When he I'm does. not pleasant to be around, even when I'm in a good mood. Well, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Carol, make a copy of that, a dub of that statement. <laughs> Actually, I've been right down wacky today. I don't know why. Can we find a lid for this? I think I'm going to need all the help I can get between now and the end of the program. A little salt and pepper goes in there, too. Uh, and that's going to be it. Now, what we're going to do is just saute that lightly. And I'm not going to put any more in there. That's enough. Well, maybe I will. I think I can put the other two in. Why not? What am I going to do with it? Is that the one that goes to it? Well, bless your heart. Well, Doris is coming through here in a pinch today. She has managed to find Well, let's a... see if she's good enough to find a lid for this one. <laughs> well, I don't know. He said, she said you don't need a lid. Yes, I do. And you heard it first here, ladies and gentlemen. She talked back to Laban. Oh, no. <laughs> But anyway, a little salt and pepper goes in there at this point. And, oh, Laban, that is beautiful. Well, it really is. That really is gorgeous. That'll do. There you go. As you can no. see, it's a perfect fit. <laughs> well, it'll do the job. Uh, but here are the two steaks, and I added a tablespoon and a half of chili powder to the gravy I made. It was real easy. And they have to stay that way until they're done. I'm going to give my recipe. Can I uh, do that? Yes, please. And then do. I'll go to part two of my uh, pine here.
The recipe for cheese steaks sent in by Anthony Coper of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Two ounces of white wine, two ounces of mushroom sliced, two large garlic cloves sliced, a teaspoon of butter to do it all in, uh, an ounce of spring water, a cup of onions chopped, a half cup of green peppers chopped, half a pound of good sliced steak, fat free, cut into small pieces, wafer thin if you want them, a lot of people use it that way, a little salt and pepper to taste, and two good fresh 12 inch hoagie rolls and some American cheese slices. We'll we get to that part in just a minute. All right. Johnson. All right, thank you so much. Uh, perhaps I should give mine while this needs to cook for five or ten minutes under cover. And my ingredients are very easy. Two to four cube steaks, uh, three tablespoons of flour, a tablespoon of cooking oil, salt and pepper as desired, and one to two tablespoons of chili powder. Real easy. Yeah. Just brown the steaks, take them out, make a gravy with the remaining flour and chili that. powder, and that's it, and a cup of water. And uh, this is just really cooking away. I want to turn it down just a well, tad. Good. I'm I don't want it to glad burn. Someone's is. Well, I don't know what's wrong with yours. As you can see, there's not even any steam coming outside of it. I could have put it up against my body, and it would have been hotter than this. Okay, oh, I've got, I've got a couple of hoagie rolls, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice them down the edge, and we'll open them up like so, because we're going to put a bunch of good stuff in. And what you do at this point is you line this with some good old American cheese. Stand up and salute that cheese. Good old American. And we'll just, uh, we'll make it real pretty. We'll put it on the diagonal. <laughs> make people think that we've done something special. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's very Isn't attractive. that attractive? Mm -hmm. Now, would you have thought to do that? Probably. Um, not like that, no. Uh -huh. I, right. I, I probably would have just put it parallel. <laughs> well... See, you're just a parallel uh -huh. kind of guy. Well, let's see how we're doing. All right, there oh, we go. They just look lovely. That's about three of those each, as you can see. Laban, I just can't believe how pretty that is. Mm -hmm. Mine would be pretty if it would cook. Which it isn't. This is humiliating. Well, and I just you know, don't know everybody do. has a disaster once in a while. Mm -hmm. Well, but we'll it's... eat this very rare, is what we're going to do. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Well, we have a couple of them that are starting to brown up just a little bit here. And I think that by the end of the show, we will actually have the recipe done. Let's be grateful that in seven minutes we can right. get it done. But anyway. Well, let's get Aunt Doris out here. Oh, please, Doris, come out here and hold your carcass in here and tell us what's going on in the world. We have really... Yeah, come on over here. Go by, Laban. Just... <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, Doris. Leave me alone. <laughs> I never promised you a rose garden, much less a flower pot. Well, look at this. Well, isn't that beautiful? Okay. When did you do these? Uh, I did this them morning? before I came. I made them for breakfast, too. What was they made for breakfast? Pardon? Oh, right. talking to them. Yes. Well, I have to talk. <laughs> She's used to working with a short one. <laughs> yes. Talking to my neck. Too. Yeah, people accuse me of not looking at the cameras. I've, I've had people... <laughs> tell me that, let alone trying to talk into the mic. Okay, this is spoon rolls that was sent in a while back. I don't know where the lady came from. Uh, all I know is her next uh, name is Esther Bedsall. And I've been using this recipe at home for quite a while. Bedsall. <laughs> Oh, 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 please and, uh, <laughs> bring up such an unattractive thing it, on it, our uh, show. It takes a package of dry yeast, four cups of self-rising flour, three-fourths cup melted shortening, two cups of lukewarm water or milk, and I use buttermilk in, in ours, and um, one egg beaten, and uh, you dissolve your yeast and put it in a bowl, but... Um, it said to cook it for 475, and I think that's a little too high because they get really dark. And maybe 450 would be better because uh, for 15 to 20 minutes it gets done. But in our area, we can get these real neat little bo a little flower pots. And I baked them in it, and I thought you could use them for uh, a picnic or uh, a festive mm -hmm. occasion to put put the rolls on, and they they come and out. And they actually come out. They, they make a real neat little, little roll. And then you can make it the conventional way, you know, in a, a muffin tin, if, you'd like, if you don't have the roll. <laughs> right, well, that's <laughs> wonderful. On it. But, uh, now, could you make them square? Well, if you had a square pot. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you okay. can buy, you can get the square pots too. Well, there but, you go, but Mr. You, what you do is just, You can buy any, uh, buy them anywhere. Just season the pot. Make sure you season the flower pot first with uh, shortening something and bake it in the oven, and then use it. Right. Because so you have sure to you seal season. the clay. <laughs> My face is so hot from what Larry gave us a little while ago. Uh, we won't be talking about look. that, Doris. We won't be talking about right. that. Thank you. All right. Well, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> well, fortunately, mine is is in good enough shape to serve at this point. Ah, well, that's nice. Uh, but yours, I guess, isn't, right? Uh, you, oh, it's uh... hermetically sealed. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Johnson's uh, has healed. Miss. Johnson's has totally healed. I can't go. Oh, how terrible. Here, let's take oh. a knife to it. No. You I don't want to so? scratch the... the uh... it, you know, we took it off the heat, and it formed a suction under the... Twist it as you pull it up. Fat chance. Twist it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. He's no, twisting it. No, the top 